Today we'll examine David Solomon's early years, family, career, and professional experiences to see how they shaped him into the CEO of Goldman Sachs. We'll also discuss his passion for music as well as the issues and difficulties he encountered along the way. Thank you for visiting Wealth Journal. If you're new to our channel, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on post notifications for additional upcoming videos that you will undoubtedly adore. Now, let's start with the life of David Solomon and his path to becoming the CEO of Goldman Sachs. Let's go! David Michael Solomon is an American investment banker and the current chief executive officer and chairman of Goldman Sachs. Born in 1962, Solomon has been with the bank for many years, starting in the investment banking division before eventually working his way up to the top. From January 2017 to September 2018, he served as president and on October 1, 2018, he officially took over as CEO in place of the retiring Lloyd Blankfein. Additionally, Solomon, formerly known as DJ D. Sol, produces electronic dance music songs for fun under the moniker David Solomon. He has given performances in clubs and music events in the New York, Miami, and Bahamas areas. Do you have a greater appreciation for David Solomon now? If so, be sure to stick around because we have plenty more information to share with you. David Michael Solomon was born in Hartsdale, New York in 1962. His mother, Sandra, worked as an audiologist supervisor, and his father, Alan Solomon, served as executive vice president of a small publishing firm. Solomon has Jewish ancestry. In 1989, at the age of 27, he wed Mary Elizabeth Solomon in Bernardsville, New Jersey. However, in early April 2018, they got divorced. Since 2002, he has been a resident at the San Remo on Manhattan. Upper West Side. In May 2016, he put the apartment up for sale at $24 million. In addition to his residence in New York City, Solomon also owns a 13,000 square foot mansion in Aspen, Colorado, which he purchased in 2004 for $4 million and later put on the market for $36 million in July 2016. In January 2018, Solomon discovered that 500 bottles from his expensive wine collection had been stolen, including seven from the French vineyard Domaine de la Romani Conti. The personal assistant, Nicolas de Meyer, was arrested and charged with theft of wine worth $1.2 million. Tragically, on October 9, 2018, just before appearing in court for the suspected wine theft, de Meyer committed suicide by jumping from the 33rd floor of the Carlisle Hotel. This is a shocking and tragic event. Solomon received a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Government from the Hamilton College in Clinton, New York. He participated in rugby and served as a chair of his social fraternity, Alpha Delta Phi. He applied for a two-year analyst position at Goldman Sachs after graduating, but was turned down. This prompted him to apply to Irving Trust, which he has described as a graduate school at a bank. In 1986, he started working for Drexel Burnham after leaving Irving Trust. He started at Drexel Burnham selling commercial paper before switching to trash bonds. Later, Solomon moved on to Bear Stearns, working on high-yield debt. He was in charge of managing the junk bonds division and marketing higher-risk bonds. He once helped a failing Dallas, Texas movie theater firm secure money through a complex bond transaction. As a result of his interactions with various Goldman Sachs managers in the late 1990s, he joined the company in 1999 at the age of 37 to join their leveraged finance unit as a partner. His departure from Bear Stearns shocked his contemporaries since they thought he was on the leadership track at Bear. He was elevated to the position of division head of Goldman's investment banking in 2006, where he served for the following 10 years. He obtained the initial public offering of Lululemon Athletica in July 2007 while dressed in a maroon jacket and sweatpants, a sample of the brand's attire, to throw everyone off in a meeting where a suit was necessary. To ensure that all employees were meeting the high standards of the company, Solomon implemented year-end compensation roundtables, where he would ask executives about their corporate strategies and hold them accountable for their performance. After Solomon departed from the investment banking division, the division was widely seen as being more professional and efficient, with profits increasing by 70% and sales margins growing from 11% to 22%. In 2014, Solomon received an offer from Sheldon Adelson, a client of Drexel Burnham, to take on the operational authority of the Las Vegas Sands casinos. However, Solomon ultimately turned down the offer, stating that he was not willing to give up his day-to-day -day authority. Do you believe David made the best choice? Let us know in the comments below. 
Goldman Sachs did not disclose Solomon's complete compensation packages, but according to SEC and IRS filings, he received a base salary of $1.85 million and a restricted stock award of roughly $10 million in January 2015. In December 2016, Solomon and Harvey Schwartz were promoted to president and co-chief operating officer after Gary Cohn left Goldman to work with the then-president of the United States, Donald Trump. Schwartz, the company's co-chief operating officer, announced his resignation on March 12, 2018, leaving Solomon as the next in command. Several hours following the news, national and international media sources formally named Solomon as Lloyd Blankfein's successor. On February 21, 2018, Blankfein showed interest in and a preference for Solomon to succeed him during a board meeting. On October 1, 2018, Solomon began serving as the company's chief executive officer. Solomon has frequently argued in favor of changing the corporate culture at Goldman. Under Solomon's leadership, the bank has implemented a number of positive changes, including increased pay, relaxed dress codes, improved computer systems, the use of video interviews, and a real-time performance assessment system for new hires. In January 2017 and January 2018, Solomon received a compensation package of $11.85 million. He is also a shareholder in Goldman Sachs, owning 0.059% of the company, valued at $58 million in January 2018. In March 2020, Solomon received a salary of $27.5 million, made up of a $2 million basic salary and a $7.65 million dollar cash bonus as well as a long-term incentive payment of 17.85 million dollars that sure is a nice payout solomon in a series of interviews in october 2017 offered valuable advice for students and those seeking employment at goldman sachs he emphasized the importance of being proficient in accounting, as well as strong communication skills, both in writing and public speaking. Above all, he stressed the importance of never losing sight of your passions. Everyone, at one point, will face challenges in their lives. These can serve as opportunities for growth and gaining valuable experience. Allow me to share with you one of David's experiences. In 2020, Solomon's compensation as CEO was reduced by 36% after Goldman Sachs admitted its role in the 1MDB crisis and agreed to pay approximately $3 billion to four governments in October 2020 to resolve an investigation into its work for 1MDB. Despite the reduction, Solomon received a $27.5 million compensation compensation package in 2019 and a $17.5 million package in 2020. Furthermore, the Hong Kong Democracy Council has stated that Solomon's attendance at the Global Financial Leaders Investment Summit in November 2022, along with other financial executives, will serve as validation of the Hong Kong's government's efforts to cover up the loss of liberties in the territory. Several members of Congress have warned against the participation of U.S. financial CEOs in the summit, stating that it'll only legitimize the Chinese Communist Party's rapid erosion of Hong Kong's autonomy, free press, and rule of law. You may also be aware of David's love of music. Let me tell you some fascinating things. Under the alias David Solomon, Solomon has gained popularity in the electronic dance music scene with performances at festivals and clubs in New York, Miami, and the Bahamas. He maintains a blog on Instagram, where he shares his music production work and has released several successful singles, including Don't Stop and Someone Like You, which reached number four on the Billboard Dance Club chart. In addition to his music, Solomon also established Payback Records in partnership with Atlantic Records in 2018. The label donates all of its proceeds to charities supporting COVID-19 relief, food assistance, and addiction recovery. Through Atlantic Records, Solomon makes his original music available and has also released other artists' work, including the single Break This Habit by Oliver Heldon and Kiko Bunn through a collaboration with Helldeep Records. Despite the challenges that come with pursuing success, those who are determined can overcome and achieve their goals. What about David Solomon did you find most inspiring? Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the video and remember to leave a like, subscribe, and enable post notifications. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, Wealth Journal, to learn more about the interesting life of the key players in the financial industry. See you in the next video.